Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to continue our study of the great book of the Acts of the Apostles with the 14th chapter. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Lord, for another day and another opportunity to go into your word, the Holy Bible. We ask, Father, that you forgive us for all of our sins, wash us in the blood of Yeshua, the Lamb of God, and make us clean. We put all our faith and our trust and our hope in the awesome sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. So we pray in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, that you fill us right now with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In Yeshua's precious name we pray, amen. Acts chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium, that they went both together into the synagogue of Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Now notice they kept going to the synagogue first everywhere they went because the gospel was to God's people, Israel, first, okay? Matter of fact, Christ said he was not sent to nobody except the lost sheep of Israel. But he said also that he had sheep, other sheep that was not of the fold of Israel. And so that's why he used Peter and Philip and Paul and the others to start bringing the message to the non-Jews, the Gentiles. Okay. So he went to the synagogue first and preached. And there was some Jews and Greeks that the Lord had enlightened through his spirit to receive what they heard. Anyway, verse 2, it says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Notice opposition everywhere they went by the children of the devil. And that's the way it is even to this day. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. So they had influence. So they went around and they kept using it to try to stop the work of God. And like I said, that's the life of a true believer. You know, don't think for one second that yours truly isn't met with op opposition. I'm met with opposition all the time from the false teachers. Okay? Anyway, uh, verse 3, it says, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now notice, they didn't go running away like a bunch of chickens, a bunch of cowards. The Lord backed them. They stayed there even longer doing the work of God until he tells them to move on. And they were able to perform signs and wonders to convince the people that they were truly sent from God. Verse 4 says, But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. So they got about half of them over there. You know, half were converted. And then it was half that kept being misled by the Jews, the, the unbelieving Jews. Verse 5. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles, which is non-Jewish people, and also of the Jews with their rulers, they used them despitefully and to stone them. So Satan moved his people to violence against the apostles of God. Verse 6. Uh, they were war, they were ward off, they were weared off, off of off it, and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lycon, Lyconia, and unto the region that life round about. So God told him when to get out of town, you know. Sometimes God will tell you to get up out of there when it looks like somebody's about to do you some harm. 
So when they moved them against him, about to stone them, the Lord said, okay, time to move on, boys. <laughs> and they got out of there. They fled to Lystra and, and Derby, which were both cities of Lyconia. And it says the region that lie, lieth round about. So the other region around that city. Verse 7, and there they preached the gospel, which is God's only son provided eternal life. That's the acronym for the word gospel. Uh, verse 8, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked, okay? Verse 9, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, 10, said with a loud voice, stand up on thy feet, stand up on your feet. And he leaped <laughs> and walked. So the Lord revealed it to Paul that this man had the faith to receive his healing. So Paul just said, stand up on your feet. And he jumped up. Verse 11 says, And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. So they totally misunderstood what was happening here. <laughs> they said, The gods have come down to us in the form of men. Um. Where was I? <laughs> 12. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, which was one of the false gods they believed in. And they called, they called uh, Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. So they thought that these were two of the false gods that they worshipped that had come down in the form of men that performed this miracle. Verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. They was about to worship Paul and Barnabas as gods. Let's see what happens. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they rent their clothes. That means they ripped their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out, 15, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? Don't do these things, y'all. We also are men, they told him, of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. 16. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. So they ran in and said, hey, y'all got it all wrong. We're down here preaching against false gods like Jupiter and Mercurius. <laughs> no, no, we're not them. We, we, we want you to know about the living God, Jehovah God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. Okay? Uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 17 says, nevertheless, they said, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. So he said, God Almighty has put all these things that blesses man in motion like rainfall. And in the, in the food that comes from the crops that we plant and the trees we plant. So he's saying these are the things that testify that God is real. Okay? Verse 18. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. So by telling them these things, they were able to convince them to stop what they were about to do. Now, before I go any further, there's a lesson here. We are never to try to accept some 
elevated status like you see the false prophets doing today. You know, they, they call us their red written. You know, that's the tradition in, in, in the corrupt churches of the world. Well, the word reverend only appears one time in the Holy Bible. It's a word describing God's name. It means to be feared. In Psalms 111, verse 9, it says, Holy and reverend is his name. The word reverend means to be feared. So no man who's truly humble would allow himself to be called reverend. You're not to be feared. You're just a little inferior, sinful man. What's to be feared from you? And so they wanted to elevate Paul and Barnabas to the status of God. But because they were true ministers of God, they're like, no, it ain't about us. And real ministers will not allow people to elevate them. Okay? Like you see all these false teachers, you know, they just love the limelight. You know, they just love to be in the public eye and they, they take advantage of their position. They're living in big mansions and, 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 they, and they live in the life of rock stars and movie stars and they're just so greedy, it's not funny. These are not real men of God because if they were like Paul and Barnabas, they would refuse all that stuff. And as we go through this book of Acts, you're going to see a true minister of God is humble, and he's living only so God can get the glory. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's the lesson here. All right, verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So notice these Men of the devil went wherever Paul and them were preaching the gospel to bring persecution against them. And they got Paul stoned and people thought he was dead. And they, they drug his body out of the city. Verse 20 says, how be it, which means, but as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. So Paul went through a lot for the Lord, just like the Lord said he would. And you and I have to be prepared to suffer for God because Jesus Christ said, if you're going to come after him, you have to be willing to pick up your cross, which is your torching stake, and follow him. In other words, be willing to die just like he died for us. And so Paul suffered a lot, and there are a lot of true ministers of God who are even suffering to this day for preaching the gospel, okay? Verse 21, And when they had preached the gospel to that city, that is uh, Derbe, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Now notice they did not let nothing to deter them. They were dedicated soldiers of Jehovah and disciples of Jesus Christ. They were not going to let anything stop them from doing what they were called to do, and that should be our attitude, okay? They went back to Lystra, Iconia, Iconium, and Antioch, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So they went back to make sure these brothers were still holding on and encourage them to hold on and let them know it wasn't going to be a picnic. They say, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Get that in your system. Because we who are living in the last days, we're going to suffer the worst if we're around when the Antichrist comes. When he comes, that last three and a half years of the great tribulation period, or the tribulation period is called the Great Tribulation, and it's going to be open season on all Christians. He's going to be killing us left and right. So we need to get rooted and grounded in the Word of God right now because we don't know if God called us to be glorified that way. Notice I said glorified because it's an honor and a privilege to suffer and die for the Lord just like he did for us. Okay? 
Anyway, verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting. Notice, prayed with fasting. You want more power to your prayer than you need to start practicing fasting. They commended them to the Lord on whom they believed, okay? Verse 24, and after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Uh, that was 24, 25. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia. 26, and thence, or from there, sailed to Antioch, from whence they had from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. So from the place they started, they went back to where they started from. 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So they went back to Antioch and told them about their first preaching expedition or missionary trip and how God had used them to spread the gospel in those different cities. Verse 28, and there they abode long time with the disciples. So they stayed there for a long time with them, rejoicing and fellowshipping with the brothers and sisters in Christ. So if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to paypal.me slash Barton Porter and please make a financial contribution of whatever you can afford to give. Whatever you give will be a tremendous blessing to me and this ministry. And you will be helping me to continue to produce these Bible studies and get the true teachings of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit out. And if you like this particular shirt I'm wearing here, my Jesus Christ died for us shirt. I encourage you to go to my online t-shirt store at teespring.com slash stores slash Godwear and check out some of the Godwear there. If you see something that you like, buy it because when you buy a t-shirt or a hoodie or a coffee mug, you're helping to support this ministry and also my favorite charity, Feed My Starving Children. So, until next time. This is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And be sure not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the 15th chapter of the great book of the Acts of the Apostles. God bless you and goodbye.